first, um, it was really progress. Well, this conference is a very important step for our network because we are really trying to reach out to other disciplines of science. We are integrated in a large European conference on legal medicine, uh, including all other disciplines like law and toxicology and other fields of uh, identification. Uh, by anthropology and dental records and things like that. So there are lots of experts from different fields and what we like to do is to uh, offer the insights that our network has obtained during the last five years uh, to give them a state-of-the-art overview about our research, about uh, the discussions going on inside our network, but at the same time we've invited a number of distinguished speakers from other countries, even from the United States, to give us a feedback about the situation in other countries and continents and to get some advice about areas that need to be addressed further. serology that was done correctly, but you also had a hair analysis that was done incorrectly. My name is Sarah Chu and I'm from the Innocence Project in the United States. We're a legal organization that exonerates people who are wrongfully convicted using forensic DNA evidence. And we're also a public policy organization that tries to pass laws or change policy to prevent wrongful convictions. first exoneration that happened and we're an organization that... So in my talk today I share the story of Stephen Barnes and he was someone who was in prison for 20 years and he had DNA in his case tested three different times and his case took three generations of DNA evidence to prove his innocence. My, my vision I think for the future of DNA testing is that it's done well that you make sure you stay on, stay on sound scientific footing, that uh, because you can push the sensitivity of methods beyond your ability to understand their, their value and how they're used, that becomes big, the big challenge. So to our society, if we want our society to use the technology appropriately, we have to make sure it's being used, used well. And that takes uh, careful analysis and making sure that you're, you're sound in terms of the science that you're doing. So I, I hope that we don't push DNA too far to the point where we can have problems, where we're protecting low amounts of DNA without having it correctly validated, or we're doing very complex mixtures and we have the chance of falsely putting somebody into that mixture that shouldn't be there, that becomes part of the challenge. So how do you describe those results in a way that, that makes a difference in making the technique used appropriately? Because we want DNA and all of forensic science to be done well so that it can be trusted when it's used in court and used to help our society be better. So. And this is not something new, but I think it's sometimes not always appreciated. As we push sensitivity, we don't always appreciate what the impact of that is. And that's really what... So Euroforgen has done a lot in terms of new research. But more importantly, I think, it's done a lot in terms of the training. So it's not only just doing, doing good work with the science, but it's pushing that work out to other people. So one of the big advantages is because so much information is available on the internet today, Euroforgen has a nice web page and has information available uh, on there to let people, so it's not just impacting Europe, but it's going beyond that. So the people in the United States or in Asia or in South America or other places around the world can use the information that's available from Euroforgen. So that's, I think, one of the big pluses of, of, of a group like this, uh, working on high quality research and then trying to implement that research so good training is really important. Forensic genetics is a small field of science, there are not so many players and so therefore collaboration is more important than competition. That's why we think that this network makes a particular effort to integrate the existing efforts and to, to, to guide people to establish more collaborations in different areas, in research, in societal area, in education and in networking in general. I think what uh, would be great is if there, after the end of this year, we still have a strong community of labs who are willing to contribute to this effort, <clears throat> in particular in the area of education training, which I think, I think uh, you, we need to achieve more because the challenges are really, really, really strong. And we, need, we only can do that with motivated colleagues who are willing to run training courses also when the amount of funding is reduced and I also hope that our colleagues who are continuing to participate in these courses will uh, contribute to this effort uh, by attending these courses even though it may cost a little bit money.